My current filter system is doing a pretty good job, but that doesn't mean improvements can't be made, whether I win the lottery or not. Hello, my name's Andy. I'm the Ginger Pond Keeper. Welcome to episode 108. This episode is the third video in a three-part series looking at my pond's filtration. Part one looked at my current system and how well or not it works. And part two looked at how I clean the filters and what additional cleaning of the pond itself is needed. If you've not already watched them, and would like to before watching this final part, see the links in the description below. Right, this video is going to look at what improvements I could make based largely around some of the issues I've talked about in parts one and two, as well as some other changes that would just make things better or easier that I may not have mentioned yet. However, some are going to be relatively realistic, meaning the kind of changes I'm probably going to be able to afford in the future, and some are additions or improvements that are probably a little out of my price range. I'm going to start with the realistic ones. First off, I'll look at the biggest issue I currently have, which is mechanical filtration. To explain, a brief, very brief recap, if you've not watched episodes one and two, or if you have, but you have a memory on a par with my own. I have a pump fed system, which are often felt to be less efficient, but in my case is made worse due to where I've placed the pump, as it has little chance of picking up all the detritus in my pond. The reason why it's there is due to my preference of having no visible pumps or pipe work to help with the natural look of the pond. Okay, recap done. Now to ways I could improve this. I could add a satellite inlet to draw water from the other side of the pond. It should be possible to do this and keep the pipework relatively hidden from view, but it would mean adding a splitter to the pump as well, as it only has one inlet, and would therefore add to the overall amount of hardware in the pond, and consequently the amount of stuff fish could knock themselves on. However, I'm not that convinced this would work that well. I think if I did consider it, I would need to take a look at other setups that have used one first. I'll put it on the possible pile. To be honest, I'm not going to talk about affordable options that I have no intention of using. As I've said previously, I'm not going to add a retro bottom drain, mainly due to appearance, natural theme again, and I don't like them, and also the increase in hardware. I would, if at some point all the manual labour I need to do gets too much, consider adding a proper bottom drain or indeed drains. In fact, having one at either end would be my preference, rather than one in the middle. Bottom drains are quite pricey, but that wouldn't be the only financial impact. I would obviously have to remove the liner and underlay and do a fair amount of digging both to set the drains and then run the pipework through ground and up to the filtration. which does lead to another additional cost. Having a bottom drain with a ground level pond is a little more complicated than with a raised pond. I'm sure if you're watching me, then you've heard of Righty, who makes a lot of DIY filtration and has a bottom drain fed filter system in a ground level pond. His solution is an access drain with a sieve and a pump that sends the water to the filter. This is a system I really like, but would add expense and work not for the pump, as the one I have would work, but for the sieve, pipes and groundwork. Therefore, I'll put it on the unlikely pile. But it's not out of the realms of realism at some time in the future. After all, I'm going to have to redo my liner at some point. It will need replacing by at least the mid to late 2030s. And as I'd be quite old then, I have half a plan to do it earlier than actually needed, within five years or so, when I'd be more able and keen to do the work, and by which point any new liner would then outlive me. So, 
Bottom drains are a definite option for the longer term future in terms of improving the collection of detritus from my pond with a shorter term option of a satellite inlet. In fact, thinking about it, I have a spare housing that came with the pump I have in my skimmer, so I could technically test it for very little, or indeed no cost, as I have a lot of off-cut pipework. Anyway, I'm not overly convinced that it would be too effective, as I've said, so I'd still need to do a fair amount of pond vacking, and it's here I can look at other improvements. The two problems with the vacking are, one, that it takes a long time, mostly as I have to stand around waiting while the chamber empties and it stops vacking, and two, because I waste a lot of water during the process, which I don't really need to do. I lose about 10% or more whenever I clean the pond and filters, and it's not a requirement to maintain water quality. It's a forced water change rather than an elective one. A solution to the first would be to get a vac that has two chambers, which allows it to vac to one whilst the other empties, so that it can continue to work constantly. To solve the second would be to use some sort of sieve that could remove the detritus and allow the water to return to the pond. So, first to the new vac. Well, it's not impossible that I could afford one, although they are considerably more expensive than my current vac. However, there's always pre-owned options or even getting lucky with a sale, so that's in the possible pile for now. As for the sieve, well, there's three options really. Firstly, a made for a vac option, which unfortunately doesn't really sieve the little stuff, which I'd need it to do. Buying a sieve filter, which would work, but would also be super pricey, or making my own. And again, I'll point to Wrighty's channel and the DIY one he made for this very purpose. This is definitely an option, would cut back a lot on the water I send to waste at each filter clean and could potentially be used when cleaning the main filters too. All in all, I'll add it to possible. Next, my skimmer. There's one problem that I've not yet mentioned and that is when I installed it, I installed it too low. I retrofitted it about a year after I re-dug the pond in 2018 and although it was a relatively simple task, there were no leaks or anything like that, it's still about an inch to an inch and a half lower than I'd like and as a result the water height in my pond has to be set lower than it otherwise needs to. Now solving this isn't impossible and maybe even quite simple. When installing a skimmer, the advice is that when attaching the liner to the faceplate to have a fair amount of slack beneath the skimmer to ensure there's no issues or straining when the pond is filled. I may well have allowed more than enough liner, quite a bit more, and as a result I might be able to raise the skimmer up an inch or so without having issues with removing and or reseating the liner, which would be quite the nightmare. So. The plan would be to drop the pond quite low and then to test the amount of liner I have to play with to raise the skimmer. If enough, in theory, this could be quite a simple job. Being prone to procrastination though, it might be one for 2025. I'll still add it to possible though. So, on to the main filtration. And here I'll start by saying that there's not really any improvements in terms of adding filtration or getting better filtration that I can afford to buy, not realistically anyway. I would like a backy shower for instance, which, especially thinking of a DIY one, would be kind of affordable. But I'd want it to be in the shed, in which I have no room, so I'd need to build a new one, the cost of which would push the whole project out of my price range. So. What I can do in terms of improvements are really just tinkering. First up, improving the multibay. When I updated my filter shed and filtration in 2022, I moved the multibay from the right to the left side of the shed. This was helpful in many ways, but did mean that the drainage pipe work and taps were inaccessible. However, I never really drained the multibay, instead used the dirty water pump to pump the water to waste. So I just ensured that the final chamber that I couldn't use the pump in could drain water to the vortex from where I could pump it out and I'd be good to go. It also meant I could have less drainage fittings and therefore save space. Part of the reason that I pumped the water out is that the height the multibay was previously set at never really allowed for quick drainage that not only meant it took a long time but was also too slow to ensure that all the waste was carried out. However, 
One of the other changes I made to the filter shed in 2022 was to raise the multi-bay up on blocks to bring it to the same height as the moving bed. This means, although I didn't consider it at the time, that using the drainage would be viable again. Add to that that I have a sump and a ready-made drainage system that the pressure filter, tempest and moving bed all use for it to tap into and it seems that my life could be made a lot simpler and less messy if I just use the multi-base drainage as designed. However, as always, there's a couple of issues. One is that to carry out any work on the left side of the multi-bay would require pretty much all of the main filtration to be taken apart and possibly the moving bed removed from the shed. It would be a big job. The second issue is about adding the necessary valves to the drainage pipework to allow cleaning of each bay. Firstly, because it would inevitably mean the multi-bay would have to be slightly further out into the shed and there's precious little room as it is. And secondly, because I'm not sure how I would then access the valves on the far side of the filter anyway. So this improvement is somewhat on the unlikely pile. It would make filter cleans a little bit easier. It's not particularly pricey, but the amount of work and the amount of problems to be solved kind of make me doubt whether or not it's worth it. Next on to something that's both simpler and something I will definitely do if required. For background, water only reaches my main biological filtration, the moving bed, if it passes through the multi-bay. Water that comes into the filter shed and goes through the pressure filter and tempest is just returned straight to the pond. It would be a simple job to send the water instead to the moving bed first. I just need to divert the tempest outlet to the moving bed, to which I'd add a bulkhead, a 90 degree and some pipe to send the water to the bottom of the bin. And then add a second outlet to the moving bed with another bulkhead and then some pipe to connect to the existing Tempest outlet pipework, which is already two inches, so no flow issues. All good, and I probably wouldn't need to even move the moving bed to complete it, and I'd only need to buy the bulkheads, as I have spare pipe and fittings. The reason I haven't done it yet is that I have no need to. As I said in part one of this series, the biological part of my filtration is performing well, so there isn't really a need to increase or improve it. However, if things are starting to change, especially as my rod and carp increase in size, and I was struggling to keep on top of the bio load in the pond, then this improvement would be first on my list, except that I'd also need to add media to the moving bed as to just send more water to it without adding more surfaces for additional beneficial bacteria would be unlikely to improve its function, so that would increase the cost a little. But overall, this goes on the possible pile. And that really is that. In terms of filtration anyway, there's numerous other improvements I'd like to make for the pond as a whole, both in terms of aesthetics and function, and maybe that could be another video. But for the filtration alone, that's it. But I still need to cover what improvements I'd make if ever I had more money than cents, or at least could spend as much as I'd like. So here goes, and this will be much quicker. I'd strip out the pond and dig it out, about eight inches wider and longer all the way around and deeper to provide a consistent five foot water depth once complete. The extra width is to facilitate block work and fibergassing to replace the liner. I'd add two bottom drains in each end, feeding a sieve pre-filter sitting before the pump, which would send water to a bespoke brick built filter shed. In which would be a probably unnecessarily large RDF, which would be followed by a 250 litre capacity moving bed. That's 250 litres of media, not water. After which water would be pumped to either a UV and then back to the pond or over a three tier backy shower before returning to the pond. No tempest, wheelie bin or pressure filter, that'd be it. The skimmer would remain, but would also send its output to the RDF. I'd also have a heater, but that's not really filtration, so that's definitely a story for another day. So, that's how I will or would improve the pond. I'd love to hear your thoughts, ideas, criticism and comments. If anyone can think of other, preferably cheaper ways of making things better, I'd love to hear them. Thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. 
This completes my series on the ponds filtration. I've got a few other videos planned. The pond's doing well and I'm starting to increase feeding a little, but not too much to report for now. If you've got some ideas for videos I can make, let me know. I'd love to hear them. If you've liked this, please like, please comment and please share. If you're not already subscribed, please also consider that. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.